Today's episode is brought to you by Bloodline, Heroes of Lethus. Described as a great president of hell, the demon Marbus is the first demon in Ars Goetia that does not conform to the royal European standard of hierarchy. He is also a demon that seemingly manages to elude the demonic classification by Colin de Plancy in his Dictionnaire Infernal, making him unique to Ars Goetia. However, if we look at Johann Weyer's Pseudomonarchia Daemonum, we do see Marbus, a great president, appear under the name Barbus, which suggests that this demon went by two different yet similar sounding names. So far we've seen men riding crocodiles, or horsemen that turn into horses, but with Marbus, we get perhaps the first intimidating looking demon, one who has the body of a man and the head of a lion. Oscaretia certainly isn't shy of showcasing some incredibly creative character designs, which for its time period of the 17th century is quite a significant feat. Indeed, if you are fond of the characters seen throughout this series, you might enjoy Bloodline, Heroes of Lethus, a hero collector fantasy RPG game that features some really stunning character designs. Bloodline, Heroes of Lethus is a strategic card game RPG where you collect champions and kingdoms, and whilst you may have seen this sort of thing before, Bloodline Heroes of Lethus stands out by allowing you to create half-blood heirs of kingdoms you control, by merging the bloodlines of various champions to create new characters. Download the game using my link in the description and receive an awesome starter pack. Elves, demons, demigods, orcs, dwarves, everything is on the table and some really creative designs can be achieved depending on which characters are combined. If you're impressed with the characters so far, check out the brand new characters of the Lycan clan Gultan, devastating werewolves that are coming to the game this Christmas. Werewolves can also be combined with other champions using the unique marriage system, and by mixing bloodlines, the offspring produced can have some crazy advantages in battle. Starting in December, players can also enjoy battling in the new Guild War on brand new maps, where you play to conquer territories with your guild members and earn yourself rewards to create the most powerful, imaginative and jaw-dropping hybrid champions known as the Bloodcraft Legends. If you join now, you'll get the chance to claim Bloodcraft Champion Scarlet, a rare hybrid of a demigod and a vampire, for free. New bloodlines and hybrids are always being updated into the game, which means the possibilities of what you create can quite literally be endless. Join me in creating the ultimate hybrid of fantasy creatures in Bloodline Heroes of Lethus, available to download for free on Android and iOS. Just use my link in the description below or scan the on-screen QR code. By using my exclusive link in the description, you will also receive an amazing starter pack containing three stamina points 100,000 gold and 100 diamonds. If you join now, you'll also get a free Lycan champion mentioned earlier as a special Christmas gift. And now back to today's episode. The fifth spirit is Marbus. He is a great president and appeareth at first in the form of a great lion, but afterwards, at the request of the master, he putteth on a human shape. He answereth truly of things hidden or secret. He causeth diseases and cureth them. Again, he giveth great wisdom and knowledge in mechanical arts, and can change men into other shapes. He governeth 36 legions of spirits, and his seal is this, which is to be worn as aforesaid. Indeed, Marbus appears to take on a unique role as President of Hell, or at least a President of Hell. How the Presidency compares to the royalty of Dukes, princes or kings is unknown to us, but it can be safely assumed that Marbus is up there as an authoritative figure. It is the demon's physical form that might intrigue viewers the most, the body of a man and the head of a lion. If we consider the symbolism behind his appearance, Marbus might very well be the most fearsome demon seen in Ars Goetia so far. The lion, of course known as the king of the jungle and an apex predator, contributes to Marbus' frightening reputation. In the underworld, he might very well be the ultimate predator, with his power and strength ensuring that he cannot be hunted by fellow spirits or creatures. Furthermore, by possessing the body of a man, 
Marbus adopts the perfect duality of man and beast. He has the speed and ferocity of a lion, but he also has the structure and nobility of man. The text also tells us that when Marbus is first summoned, he appears in his lion form, suggesting that this demon does not want to be summoned and will test the summoner by going on the attack. However, at the request of the summoner, assuming this is someone who knows what they're doing, Marbus will concede and revert to a more passive human form, where he is ready to acquiesce. So what is it that Marbus can do for us? Well, like some of the previous demons, he appears to be very wise and can answer questions that might seem impossible, those that are hidden or secret. This may pertain to knowledge that we as humans, at least in a religious or biblical sense, are not meant to know, perhaps information that pertains to the heavenly realms, or even God himself. As we've seen in the story of Adam and Eve, mankind was never meant to have the knowledge that they ended up possessing, and so it isn't out of the question that there was even more knowledge that remained hidden. You might say that Marbus offers this tantalizing, yet most certainly forbidden wisdom, a gift that many would be hard pressed to say no to. But Marbus isn't just a teacher, he can be malicious as he causes diseases. Whilst we are not provided much context for the use of his wicked power, it can be assumed that Marbus can be commanded by the summoner to afflict someone with illness, or that he might even cause illness upon those who have summoned him, if they are inexperienced, or if they offend him. Conversely, Marbus is also said to cure diseases, and so it can be assumed that Marbus can be summoned to ease a person's suffering, or to heal them altogether. Marbus also has profound knowledge in mechanical arts, leading us to believe that despite his alarming lion form, he does have an engineering or artistic mind, allowing him to create or modify machinery. We also see that where previous demons in Ars Goetia can shapeshift, Marbus offers this ability to humans. Interestingly, whilst it's unclear what the hierarchical nature is between royalty and presidency in the underworld, we do see that Marbus governs 36 legions of spirits, which is actually more than the Marquis Simigena, the Prince Vasago, and the Duke Agares. Asgoetia makes it known that this is his seal, and that it must be worn by the summoner when he intends to bring the beast up from the underworld. As mentioned, Colin de Plancy doesn't appear to make reference to Marbus in his Dictionnaire Infernal, but Johann Weyer does mention Marbus in the form of Barbus, in his Pseudomonarchia Daemonum. We are told of virtually the same account. Marbus, alias Barbus, is a great president, and appeareth in the form of a mighty lion, but at the commandment of a conjurer, cometh up in the likeness of a man, and answereth fully as touching anything which is hidden or secret. He bringeth diseases and cureth them. He promises wisdom and the knowledge of mechanical arts or handicrafts. He changeth men into other shapes and under his presidency or government are 36 legions of devils contained. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's video then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. Until next time.